Hi, um, today we are going to talk about uh, music and sound effects in LibGDX. For this we start out by looking at the audio interface, which is similar to the graphics input and files interface we looked at in the last video tutorial. So let's give it a go. Okay, so this is the audio interface. Every backend implements this interface and provides you with a couple of methods to create audio devices, audio recorders, sounds, and music. The first two methods and the classes associated with those methods are there so you get direct access to the audio device for playback and recording. You basically can throw PCM samples at the audio device with this audio device, audio device interface and record PCM samples from the audio device with the audio recorder interface. We're not going to talk about this in this video tutorial, so I suggest you just check out the Java docs. What we're interested in is the new sound and new m music method of the audio interface. These two methods create objects of the interface's sound and music. Sound encapsulates a sound effect. Sound effects are short audio files which get loaded uh, completely into main memory and are, playback, uh, are played back from there directly. Those are used if you want to do something like explosion sound effects or shotgun effects and stuff like this. Uh, music is used for large musical pieces that don't get loaded completely into main memory, but instead are streamed from the uh, from the storage they are stored at. So, without further ado, let's look in the sound and music interfaces. So the sound interface is pretty simple. You basically just have a play method and another one to play back the sound effect with a specific volume. Those volumes are not uh, logarithmical, so you just specify uh, a volume in the range from 0 to 1. Uh, there's also a stop method which will stop all the sound uh, playbacks of this single sound. You can play back the sound effect multiple times concurrently. Uh, and you have a dispose method. So what's up with the dispose method? As you can see, the sound interface extends the disposable interface. Every class and interface in libgdx which extends this disposable interface needs to be disposed at some point. Um, the reason for this is that <coughs> we have to rob some system resources like sound effects or media players or OpenGL textures, stuff like this, uh, which are not under the control of the garbage collector in the virtual machine. So, if the sound effect is no longer used, just call the dispose method to make sure that all the resources associated with the sound effect are disposed, so that you don't get any memory leaks. The second interface is the music interface. It's pretty straightforward as well and modeled after the media player interface a little bit. Um, you can play a music, you can pause it, you can stop it, you can query whether it's playing, you can set it to loop so that it repeats itself after it uh, uh, was played back completely. You can set the volume at any time and get the position. And the music interface also extends the disposable interface. So if you're done with your music instance, just call the dispose method where appropriate. Okay, so let's look at that in code. I prepared uh, the GDX tutorial project a little bit. I added a music file and a sound effect file, an MP3 and an OGG, to the data folder. So those will be um, accessible to us via internal file handles. So let's create a new application listener. <coughs> let's call it audio example. And we want to keep it really simple. We just want to load a music uh, object and a sound effect object, play back the music uh, looping, and play the sound effect each time the window gets clicked by the mouse or is touched by a finger of the user. So as always we have to implement the application listener interface. Oop. Okay. And let it implement all the methods. I deuglify them. At some point I'm going to clean up my formatter really really. Okay, so we will keep a reference to a music instance and a sound instance in our audio example class. 
and now it's time to create those instances. So that's actually pretty simple. We just say the music instance should be stored in the member, and we fetch it from gdx.audio, which gives us direct access to the audio interface we just uh, looked at. And of that module we call the new music method, passing in a new file handle. And since the music is an internal file stored in a data folder, we just need to get an <coughs> internal file handle via gdx.files.internal. So we get a file handle that points at an internal file and specify the relative path, which is data slash music dot mp3. Okay, so for the sound effect, we do exactly the same. We just go to the audio module, say new sound, gdx files internal, and the path is data slash shot dot ogg. Great, now f we've loaded our music and sound instance. So what we do now is set the music to looping so that it will repeat itself each time the music is uh, played back completely. And we also make it a little bit more silent so that we can actually hear the sound effect as well. And we start playing it immediately in the create method. So after that we don't have to do anything really. The music will just play back for as long uh, as we don't interact with it by, say, calling the pause method or calling the stop method. Uh, for the sound effect, we said we want to play it back each time that the screen is touched or uh, the user clicked with the mouse on the window. So we'll do this in the random method, of course, because this is the one where our main loop magic happens. And to determine whether the m window or the activity was touched or clicked on, we have to use the input system. We haven't talked about this yet, but I guess we can have a short excurse. So, uh, oh yeah, a new bug. So what we want to know is whether that screen was touched, and that's really easy. We just go to the input module via gdx.input and ask whether the screen was just touched. And in this case, we tell the sound instance to play itself. Right? So that's easy. Uh, and finally, as we have two disposable objects here, we also have to make sure that we clean them up eventually. So we do this in the dispose method of our application listener, which will get called when the application is closed. Uh, in a real game, you'll probably load and dispose um, assets depending on your game state. So that's really up to you and your application architecture. Okay, so let's go through it one more time. We have two members, music and sound. We load them via the audio module and the respective methods, uh, accessing them via internal file handles. We set the parameters of the music instance and tell it to be looping and to have a volume of or half the volume it would normally have. And we tell it to play itself back. And in a random method, we just constantly, constantly check whether the touch screen was touched or the window was clicked on a desktop. And in that case, tell the sound to play itself back. Um, this will result in a rapid succession if we of, of playback if we click the window or the activity fast, rapidly. <laughs> okay, and finally, we dispose of all the things. So let's execute this. And for this, we have to manipulate our desktop starter a little. Instead of the file IO example application listener, we are now using the audio example application listener. And that's basically it. So let's just run the desktop starter. Okay. And I'm not ex exactly sure whether the screencasting software can uh, also record the audio output. I hope it does. If not, I tell you what it does. The music has just started playing and will play forever until we close the the window, and each time I click on the window, the sound effect will be played back. So that's it. Okay, to summarize, get your music and sound instances from the audio files interface and make sure you dispose of them in the appropriate place if you no longer need them. That's it. Ciao.